everyone. Welcome back. This is Professor Hall, and today we are talking about run-ons and comma splices. <laughs> and there's Forrest running. <laughs> um, so the first part, we looked at run-on sentences with simple sentence structures, um, and today we're going to look at run-on sentences with other types of sentence structures what we've learned, where we are, and where we're going. Um, so these are the four types of sentence structures, um, simple, compound, complex, and compound complex. Now, if you don't know what those are, I have another series of videos about sentence structures, and you can click on my name and go to the playlist for grammar and sentence structures, and they're all in there. Last time we looked at run-on sentences, we learned what a run-on sentence was, and we took a look at simple sentences that were joined the wrong way. Today, we're going to look at some, some run-on sentences with other sentence structures. I broke this up because I think that it's kind of sometimes easy to see where the split comes with these simple sentences. But when we get into things that are a little bit longer by nature, like compound complex sentences, finding the split and finding where we should put in that punctuation or those conjunctions can be a little bit difficult. After these lessons, we're going to examine comma splice errors. And then after those, we're going to look at comma use and all of the comma rules. So let's get started to review the basic parts of a sentence. An independent clause is a complete simple sentence and it has a subject and verb. So here are subject cats and will meow is our complete verb. We also have dependent clauses. Dependent clauses start with a subordinating conjunction and there's a list of them here. After, although, because, before, if, since, though, unless, until, um, all of those words, when they're put before an independent clause, they make that sentence not complete because there's unanswered questions. So when we put these together, we can combine a dependent clause with an independent clause. As I told you earlier, the meeting has been postponed, dependent and then independent. This could also be flipped if we wanted. The meeting has been postponed, as I told you earlier. Either way works, and that's what's called a complex sentence. But those are the types of clauses, and when they're joined incorrectly, we get a run-on. So, a review first of the four sentence structures. Um, first, the simple sentence, also known as an independent clause, has a subject and a verb, and it stands alone as a complete thought. Matthew ate an entire pie. <laughs> so, Matthew in blue here is our subject, ate is our verb, Pie is the object, it's what he ate, but he is doing the action of eating. A compound sentence is when we have two independent clauses or simple sentences joined by a coordinating conjunction. Also, a lot of times a teacher will call these a fanboy's conjunction. And you'll hear that term again later, but it stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And a few of these, you know, in, in everyday English, we don't use nor that often <laughs> to, com to combine sentences, and we don't use for that often either. But um, these are the words that we can use to join them. So Matthew, independent clause, ate an entire pie, and conjunction, he started eating a second one. Oh my goodness. So independent clause, Conjunction, independent clause. That's our compound sentence. A complex sentence joins a dependent clause with an independent clause, kind of like the example that we looked at earlier. While Matthew didn't feel well, this is our dependent, whoops, this is our dependent clause, and this is our subordinating conjunction. I'll put a C there for conjunction, and I'll circle it again, even though it's in green. He kept on eating, independent clause. So if I just had read he kept on eating on its own, it would stand alone as a sentence. But here, because they're combined properly, they make a complex sentence. A compound complex sentence, which basically is combining two and three. So Matthew didn't win the pie eating contest, 
but he came in second since pie is his favorite food. So we have here an independent clause, then our conjunction but, then another independent clause, and then our dependent clause. So again, that is two or more independent clauses combined with one or more dependent clauses. This should say independent, <laughs> sorry. And this should just say dependent, um, yeah. <laughs> so two or more independent clauses with one or more dependent clauses. And you can kind of see how that works. This is important to know because when you look for a run-on sentence, you need to ask yourself which part of this sentence is correct. So what I have a lot of times, I'll see a student do while math who didn't feel well and put a period in there. And that turns that into a fragment. So it's a different error that we don't wanna make. So here are all the ways, um, the run-on and a few ways to fix the run-on. I was hungry, I ate lunch. I was hungry, period, I ate lunch. I was hungry, semicolon, I ate lunch. I was hungry, comma, so I ate lunch. So a run-on is also called a fused sentence. Fused, if you remember from before, means to join together as one. So they're incorrectly fused or incorrectly joined. Yeah, there we go. Join or blended to form a single entity. I like that. A run-on occurs when two or more complete sentences are smashed together like one sentence. So here we've got the independent clause, I was hungry, the independent clause, I ate lunch, and they're just put together like they're one sentence. And this can be fixed in one of five ways. We see three of them over here, um, putting in a period, putting in a semicolon, and adding a comma plus a fanboy's conjunction. We can also add a subordinating conjunction, so one of those words like before, because, since, after, although, and that would turn part of the sentence into a complex sentence, or the whole sentence into a complex sentence. Or we could rewrite it completely. I don't know why that's showing up that way. Sorry, guys. Um, so let's fix the same run on all five ways. Mark and John were best friends. John moved away. Our split comes here. Um, Mark and John were best friends. Independent clause. John moved away. Independent clause. So here we have two simple sentences fused as one run on. Fix one, add a period and a full stop. Um, which is a full stop. Mark and John were best friends. John moved away. We can add a semicolon for a moderate pause. That's kind of like a medium pause. Mark and John were best friends. John moved away. Or we can add that comma plus that fanboy's conjunction to create a compound sentence. Mark and John were best friends. Independent clause, comma, but conjunction. John moved away. Independent clause. Now we have a compound sentence. I'm just gonna show again where that split came. Add a subordinating conjunction to turn it into a complex sentence. So here I've given you a couple different ways that we can do this. Mark and John were best friends until John moved away. So this is now an independent clause and after the until, the until to away, that's the dependent clause. Although Mark and John were best friends, dependent clause, comma, John moved away. Even though John moved away, dependent clause, comma, Mark and John were best friends. I forgot to highlight the comma, so I'll circle it. There we go. So all of those are now correct. They're now complex sentences. Or you can reword it completely. In kindergarten, Mark and John were best friends. Later, John moved away. So which version do you prefer? That's a question I ask because this is where writing, the, the process of writing, it's not like math. There's no one specific answer. Here we have five different ways and certainly with rewording completely, there's a lot of options, right? So think about for your own writing. I know some people who, um, you know, like Ernest Hemingway, <clears throat> They write like Ernest Hemingway, who wrote very short, direct sentences, simple sentences that were to the point. 
Um, and other people who like to write very long, flowery sentences with a lot of description in them and semicolons to connect. So think about that, what your style might be, and also what your reader might need. Do you need a short sentence where you need to just put in a period? Or can you turn it into a complex sentence and give them maybe a little more, more to think about or connect your ideas? So all of that is review, but now I want to look at run-ons of different types. The sentences we've looked at so far were all simple sentences. Sometimes it can be easy to find a run-on when two or more simple sentences are fused or joined together the wrong way. But when we have compound complex and compound complex <laughs> um, sentences, finding and fixing the error can be a little bit challenging because these sentence types all join two or more clauses together. So here are some compound sentence run-ons. Thomas wanted to be well, a well-known painter, but he couldn't afford paints. He painted houses for extra money. So a lot of times if I give my students something like this, I'm going to draw in here and then I'll erase it. They will put a period in here because they see a comma, so they think it's a run-on, which none of our run-ons have had commas. We'll talk about that more later. And then they'll make this a uh, big B, and then the sentences don't really make sense. You can't really start, <laughs> but he couldn't afford oil paints. He painted houses. Um, not only are you starting with a conjunction, but also you still have the split actually comes after paints. So we haven't really fixed the sentence by doing that. Um, this is a compound plus a simple sentence. So we have independent. Then our conjunction, then our second independent, okay? That's our compound sentence. Then our split comes here, and then we have a, whoops. I did that wrong. Sorry, guys. Our split comes here, <laughs> um, and then we have another independent clause. Mark it with an I. So, Next, I wanted to hire Thomas, and I gave him a job. Since he never showed up, we had to fire him. So sometimes, <laughs> if you do things the wrong way, if you don't understand that this is compound plus complex, you might put a period here, which doesn't make sense. I wanted to hire Thomas, and I gave him a job since he never showed up. Grammatically, it's correct, but it doesn't make logically sense. Why would you give him a job if he never showed up, right? Um... So let's take that out um, and just kind of look at the structure. So the compound, remember, is the independent, the conjunction, and then the second independent. And then the complex, starting with since, since he never showed up, that's the dependent clause. And then we had to fire him as the independent. So we have that. Let's try again. Independent, conjunction, independent. Here's our dependent marker word. And then with we, we start second independent. And where does our split come? Um, our split comes after the compound sentence. Um, I wanted to hire Thomas and I gave him a job split. Since he never showed up, we had to fire him. Let me need a comma here. The painter came back and apologized, so we gave him another chance. He did a wonderful job, and we gave him a bonus. Here we have two compound sentences. So our independent, then our, our this conjunction. It's the word and, but it's not the conjunction. Um, we gave him a second chance, independent, the split is here. He did a wonderful job. Independent and conjunction. We gave him a bonus. Now, why did I go through that? Um, you don't need to do that in your own papers, but I just wanted to kind of show you what this looks like and how these sentences are put together. So um, here's the split for each one. 
just to kind of show you a little bit better what that would look like without all the red on there. So we need to do something for the first one in between paints and he, for the second one after job, and for the third one after chance. So let's help Thomas. Thomas wanted to be a well-known painter, comma, but he couldn't afford oil paints, comma, so he painted houses for extra money. So here we've connected the compound sentence um, with a comma and another fanboy's conjunction, and that's okay. Now it's again a compound sentence. I wanted to hire Thomas, and I gave him a job, period. Since he never showed up, we had to fire him. So here we put in a period, and then we have the compound followed by the complex. Makes a lot more sense. The painter came back and apologized, so we gave him a second chance. Period. He did a wonderful job, comma, and we gave him a bonus. So again, putting in a period. So as you can see, um, with all those compound sentences, we're still fixing them the same way. I could have put in a semicolon in a couple places um, if I wanted, like, for example, here. If I wanted a semicolon there and a little s, that would have been okay, too. Grammatically, it would have been fine. Um, or we could have reworded things. So, now let's take a look at complex sentence run-ons. Although they lived across the street, we never met the Robinsons. They were not friendly people. This is a complex plus a simple. And our split comes here. The first part of this is complex. We have although, that's our dependent clause. We had never met the Robinsons, that's independent. And then our simple sentence, they were not friendly, that's another independent. Every morning, Mr. Robinson scowled at me because he hated watching me walk my dog. He was a mean old man and he screamed at my dog. The split comes here. And this is a complex plus a compound. So every morning, Mr. Robinson smiled at, scowled at me. That's our independent because dependent. He hated watching me walk my dog. He was a mean old man, independent and conjunction, he screamed at my dog. So complex plus compound. Again, I hope that this isn't confusing, um, me marking it up all over the place. I just wanna show a little bit better how these are constructed so that when it comes to fixing them, it, it might be easier. I started waiting until later in the day to walk puffers. <laughs> After Mr. Robinson drank his morning coffee, he seemed nicer. So this is a complex and another complex. Here we have our independent and then our dependent um, until and another dependent with after and then another independent with he seemed nicer. So again, just so you can kind of see where the splits are, just so we have a better visual of that. So let's help Puffers. <laughs> Puffers the dog. Although they lived across the street, we had never met the Robinsons because they were not friendly people. Now we've added that dependent clause word. And we have now <laughs> two dependent clauses with that independent clause. Every morning, Mr. Robinson scowled at me because he hated watching me walk my dog, period. He was a mean old man and he screamed at my dog. Adding in a period. After Mr. Robinson drank his morning coffee, he seemed nicer. As a result of this discovery, I started walking puffers later in the day. Rewriting the sentences. Good, okay, so you can see we can fix those run-on sentences in any one of those ways. And now we come to compound complex. All right. While in class, 
we were going to study poetry and plays. So I will need, we are going to study poetry and plays. So I will need to plan my time carefully. I don't have the best study habits. Um, while in class, we are going to study poetry and plays. So I will need to plan my time carefully. The split comes here. I don't have the best study habits. Before I begin, I will need to buy a planner or I could buy an organization app for my phone. These things shouldn't cost much, but my book will cost quite a bit. So here our split comes here after phone. <laughs> there it is. So the first one is a compound complex plus a simple. So we have the, de the dependent, independent, conjunction, and then our other independent. And then it's joined with I don't have the best and that's an independent as well. Before I begin, I will need to buy my planner. Um, before I begin, that's our dependent clause. I will need to buy a planner, independent, or conjunction. I could buy an organization app for my phone, independent. These things shouldn't cost too much, but my books will cost quite a bit. So that's independent, conjunction, and independent. So it's compound, complex, plus another compound. Oh, now we come to a really long one. I may need to get a work study job because my textbooks cost more than I expected and I won't have any spending money until I am able to find work. I will need to ask my parents for money, but I'm dreading that idea because they are also struggling. There's so much going on in this sentence. It's almost difficult to figure out where things are, but I will say this. Here's a because. Here's an and. Here's an until, here's a but, and here is another because. So all of those are our conjunctions. And if you really want to know, I don't want to mark it up because there's not a whole lot of room now, but it's independent conjunction, um, which turns it into a dependent, then a conjunction, then another independent, then a dependent, um, then an independent, then a conjunction, then an independent, then a, con then a dependent. My goodness, I can't even keep track. So at any rate, it's a very, it's not just a very long sentence. It's a run on where these, there's two compound complex sentences. They're not joined the right way. And it's really confusing. Um, I'm going to erase the stuff on the slide just to talk about this for one second. Okay, right here, just this part. I just want to look at this. I won't have any spending money until I'm able to find work, comma, I will need to ask my parents for money. So do they, did this, the person mean I won't have any spending money until I'm able to find work, period? I will need to ask my parents for money? Or do they mean until I'm able to find work, comma, I will need to ask my parents for money? It makes a difference. Um... It makes a difference because the the meaning isn't clear and that's why we fix these we're gonna we're gonna look at the meaning of things a lot more um in a few lectures from now where we look at authentic materials it's quite confusing and when i have students who do peer review a lot of times they'll look at their their peers work and be like what what are you trying to say <laughs> it's just so confusing your ear for your reader okay so here's the split and I decided to put it here until I'm able to find work because there is a comma here. So I, I assumed that that's the split would come here after money. And how are we going to fix them? Um, while in class, we are going to study poetry and plays. So I will need to, spend, to plan my time carefully because, dependent clause word, I don't have the best study habits. Before I begin... I will need to buy a planner or I could buy an organization app for my phone and these things shouldn't cost too much, but my books will cost quite a bit. So here we have our dependent clause conjunction and here we have a fanboys conjunction. 
I may need to get a work study job because my textbooks cost more than I expected and I won't have any spending money, period. Until I'm able to find work, I will need to ask my parents for money, but I'm dreading that idea because they are also struggling. Putting in a period. All right, let's review. A run-on sentence is also called a fused sentence. It occurs when two or more complete sentences are joined or fused incorrectly. Look for the split, so try to figure out where one sentence ends and another begins. You can fix a run-on in five ways. Adding a period, adding a semicolon, adding a comma, and a fanboy's conjunction to create a compound sentence, adding a subordinating conjunction to create a complex sentence, or rewriting them completely. Um, we're going to also talk about comma splice errors. Then I think this is the most difficult part of me just explaining a lot of these terms to you guys. When you look at the authentic materials, you can see what this looks like in real life. So we're going to talk about what a comma splice is and kind of review that term and learn that. But when we move on to that comprehension stage of looking at these things in short paragraphs and then looking at them in real life, and then certainly just doing the practice, practicing and reading, you're going to um, be able to learn this a lot um, better. So if these terms kind of confused you, I hope that they didn't. Um, but if they do, you can let me know in the comments and I will try to um, give a better or different explanation. Thanks, everybody.